Hello everyone and welcome back to my transgalactic trek in Elite Dangerous and for this episode I've taken a good look at the galaxy map and I've got a nice long list of stars going all the way to a thousand light years ahead of us so uh, we can just uh, go ahead and try and hit those. I've aimed mainly for A and B type stars so hopefully we'll get the credit for discovering some of those uh, juicier systems but uh, along the way I'm sure we'll hit a lot of other systems that might need some exploring so we will do that now I'm looking at this I don't think this is a particularly worthwhile star to try and refuel at so let's just uh, head on to our first target uh, so the next system is actually uh, the next system is actually just en route but we'll take a look at it and then we're hitting HIP 89384 is our actual target okay here we go Okay, here we are. Not the greatest sort of place. Let's see. Yes, it is a red dwarf. Uh, let me do some fuel scooping here just quickly. Okay, what is the situation with this system? Do we have other stars to look at? Yes, we do. Okay, so we are... Uh, but it's uh, been discovered by Echo. Uh-oh. We seem to have been lapped in terms of our discovery. Okay, let's move on quickly then. Probably HIP uh, 89384 has already been discovered then. Which figures, because it's a juicy star. No, no, that's not it. We'll still get cash for giving a different view of HIP. Oh, sorry, 88615. 89384. 89384 is the next one after that, sorry. 88615 first. Okay, so this is HIP 88615. Probably would have been a better star to refuel around, but that's all right. Um, let's do this discovery thing, and I'll check the system map. Yeah, Skeev was the first to discover this system. Very juicy system. You can see it is an A type there. I mean, a, a B type and an A type, and then a F type and then a K type. I think we've probably been this way before. But anyway, uh, as I was saying, next system... Uh, you know what? The HIP stars probably will all have been discovered. But... Anyway, let's try it. I mean... For all I know, they just... There's some explorers who just went to HIP stars. But it's on, uh, on our way anyway. So let's just plot route for it. And again, we are trying to make it towards the galactic center. So this is sort of off to the side, though. Mm, this is not the way I want to go. Well, I think I went off to the side because there were more likely stars along this path. But maybe we'll uh, skip over HIP 89384 because it's very likely that the explorers who have handled this area will have gone through them already. So I'm going to head for this sector. T289. Which is a hundred light years away. And hopefully that one has not been hit by them. Okay. 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 Buffet the fourth. Buffet the fourth. All right. Got here before me. Next up. Okay. Well, this isn't a particularly bright star. Maybe we'll get exploration credit for this one. Yeah. Okay, well, M class star, fine. At least we get something. So let's uh, properly take a look around. J 
just seems like Lone Star. Oh well. Alright, next. I guess that's why people haven't hit it. Okay, well this one doesn't look like a particularly great star either, which might mean I might get exploration credit for it. Let me give a discovery scanner ping out too. Well, nothing around it in its immediate vicinity. And no other stars, so yeah, I get it. Uh, K-type star, but not much to show for that, probably. Okay, this looks like a little bit more of a decent looking thing. This is the one I targeted. I'm surprised it doesn't look very bright. Was this something else around here? Maybe it was just en route. Oh, four new objects. Maybe I picked it out because it had some interesting stuff around it. Ah, but it's been discovered already. Oh, look. Roof... Uh, roof like it? Roof like it? It's got a Y-type dwarf orbiting around it. But alright, uh, if uh, it hasn't been discovered, we move on. So I was not the first one to think that this might be a good star to explore. Let us continue on. Probably the next star I've got will also be discovered, but we'll, we'll hit a few things on the way. So just a short hop to HIP 8A219. Oh heck, let's explore this unexplored thing while we're at it. Okay. Okay, well this this looks pretty good. Considering this isn't our target, this is a pretty nifty little star here. Probably means somebody's explored it already. Four new astronomical objects. It's a blue-white A-type star. And no. Okay, we've got an A-type star. Okay, well, this is something. Alright, unfortunately no companions for it, but let's hit its uh, planets. It's definitely got some planets to look at. And maybe more than we see right there if we give further pings, we'll see. So I hear the devs are gonna give us limited external views. They don't want to make it uh, fully free external views because that would give combat advantage. But limited external views, and I'm definitely enthusiastic about that because I want to take nice screenshots and nice cinematic videos of stuff, and I need to be able to drop the HUD somehow. I haven't been able to take very good images, especially for the opening. You'll notice I haven't done an opening for this series, and part of the reason is because I can't get rid of the HUD, and that limits what I can do creatively if I want to use an image from the game, of course, or a video from the game. Let's give it a little quick little ping out here. Well, nothing new like that. Okay. You are a high metal content planet, very good. But you also have a moon, it looks like. What do you guys look like up close? Let's take a look. Rocky planet. What sort of rocky planet are you? Ah, oh, the central planet looks vaguely greenish. 
maybe yellow. Man, just uh, maybe it's just wishful thinking that that uh, that looks a little bit green to me. Now you're a rocky planet, and you look very bright. Hmm. Okay, well uh, let's let's quickly take a look at what this thing is made out of. We've got one more planet to explore after this. Right, so, um, you. Okay, rock, metal. Um, doesn't give me any information that leads me to understand why it looks the way it does. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the roughly 14% of metal is. Uh, it sure looks like it's like solid metal or something. I mean, well, of course, we can't see inside. Maybe it's just a thin veneer on it, but that's quite a that's quite a planet right there. Very shiny. Okay, next thing. High metal content planet. Probably not as shiny as the little moon we saw. Nah, more Venus-like. Okay. So. On to our actual target star, which probably has already been discovered, but we'll see. Okay. And so you are a very bright star. And what do you have immediately around you? One little thing. Alright, and have you been discovered before? A type star. Ah, you've got another star with you. And you have not been discovered before. Alright. So we've got K type, K type, K type, three K types to explore alongside you. But first of all, let us see what your closest companion is. Now, with the brightness of these two stars, can we see any of the other companions? Or shall we head out a little bit further? I would assume the other two are relatively close together, that's just a guess. There's this one spot there that's very suggestive, but let's just head away from these two so that we can get out of their glare. And then we'll take a quick look around after that. That's a likely subject right there, though. Okay, I'm no longer feeling the love for this star. Uh, this is probably a dud here. Let's do a little flip around to see if there are any other likely subjects. We're so far away from the system, though. Might be tough to spot any. I suppose that little spot right next to it might be something, and then this one right in the center of the screen there might be something. The little spot we're targeting actually contains both of the already discovered stars, so maybe the little one just to the right of them is uh, main candidate. Shall we go for this one first? It doesn't look too different from the background stars though. It does seem to move with respect to the background. Yeah. Okay. So let's go for this one first, and then that spot that's closer to the two stars, which also seems to move with respect to the background. Okay, so we are getting closer now. It's looking good. 
Let's give a preliminary pulse on the off chance that we catch a planet of this thing. No such luck. All right. Now, that is where the core stars are. Where did that... Uh, oh, uh, that's probably both of the core stars. The, the yellow one is probably... The other K-type is probably right next to it right there. Let's see. Okay, so that takes care of it for this sector. I believe... Let us double check. Star, 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 star. No planets. Okay. Probably. Well, that's why we're saving up for the advanced scanner, just to make sure. So, this was the previous target. So, next target I want to go to is... Not a Hipparchus star. It's Coal 359. Very familiar sector. Okay. 56 light years away. That'll take us to how far along? Uh, 780. Past 780. Okay. And what type of star is that? An A9. Okay. Okay, this looks like an uninspired sort of star. Let's see. No, oh, it's got a companion though. And unexplored. Two companions. T type though. Not sure I want to stick around for that. But it is unexplored. Let's see if it's got something nearby as well. Not really. Well, I do see something around it. It's gotta be something lying in... Oh! Wow, that looks... The last time I saw something from this distance, it was a total berserker. But man, that looks suggestive. I say we take a look at that, huh? Let me just, uh, hold on, let me slow down and flip around and just take a look to see that there isn't anything else even more interesting. There are some background-ish type stars, but nothing that really catches the eye like that particular constellation of lights. Alright. Well, those are all transients, but this thing hasn't been discovered yet. Could they all be planets? Ooh, I think they're all planets. Oh, okay. Wow, this is quite a system. Horrible stars. Many, many planets. Okay, an L-type brown dwarf. And there's gonna be a T-type, not even really a star kind of thing. Okay, a rocky planet. Well, let's take a look and see if there's anything Earth-like around here. That's that's extra credit, right? Earth-like planets. That one looks vaguely Mars-like. This might say it's a rocky planet, but it looks... It's more icy. Okay, next. We'll just peruse them using the system map afterwards. Let me just take care of all the planets quickly. Okay, this is the last one. Rocky ice planet. So, let's see what this system actually looks like once everything is discovered. So, a lone M-class star there, uh, and then a pair, L and T, and one planet with one moon, one rocky planet, high middle content planet, 
one moon. One little planet, carbon dioxide, probably Venus-ish kind of thing. Uh, though maybe with such dim stars, it's it's more of a Mars-ish thing. One moon, and then argon, argon, argon with a little bit of nitrogen. So it's an odd thing, you know. Uh, oh, the, the silicate magma is nice, but you know, having so many planets with just one moon is a little bit of an odd situation, actually, when you think about it. Okay. And you look sort of G-type, maybe? Nine! Nine, st nine little astronomical objects? What kind of system are you? No, you're pretty complicated. What the heck is going on here? Oh, somebody's already discovered this. But... Yeah, yeah, the Star Falcon is ahead of us on this one. But what I want is that... That's a pretty dim spot right there. That purple spot. Sort of looks like a Y-type star. Oh, it should be something around here. These look like planets, I guess, based on the previous one. Okay. Star Falcon's taking care of all of them. Well, but this is orbiting something. We can see the orbit... well, we, we were able to see the orbit line through it. Oh, maybe what's going on is it's orbiting both stars. Let, let me take a look again. So maybe what it's saying, it's it's orbiting the barrier center between these two stars. This one and this one. I think maybe that's what's going on. Alright, well anyway, uh, Star Falcon took care of this one. Let's just uh, continue on. Okay, but it sure is a tempting star. Let's quickly see if Star Falcon got to before us. No, and Dragon did. Okay. And in fact, while that's still scanning, I'm gonna go to the galaxy map and bring up our next navigation point, which is gonna be still in the COL 359 sector. It's OIJ D990. And that will get us to 860. So. Good deal, and it is a what type star? A9. Okay, let's check out. Hopefully we're not on a road where a lot of people have already been discovering this stuff. Okay, well this one is unexplored. It's just 3M class though, so I'm probably not gonna stick around. Let's give a discovery scan pulse though. Just in case there's a uh, business. Doesn't seem like it. Let's see... anything close by? Well, that's pretty obvious right there. Alright, let, let me get that one. Well, I thought it was obvious, but this one's taking a lot longer than I thought it was. Would and doesn't look very M class to me. I don't know. Getting a little bit worried here. I want to cover a serious amount of ground and or space, obviously, but I don't want to be hanging around looking at M-class stars all day. Of course, in recent experience, it seems like the weaker stars are the ones that are more likely to have planets around them. 
I guess there's some logic to that, but not a whole lot. I think maybe there's two of them actually. I think, yeah, yeah, I think it's actually both of the other M-class stars, that's why it's so much brighter. Alright, seems like we're on the right road here. Okay, getting decently close here, and we have two M-class stars, so this will take care of this system. Let's start giving pings out to see if there's anything else around. No obvious planets. Okay, there they are. Okay, so this one is all complete. Alright, uh, on to our next target. Okay, looks like another M, M class here. Let's just verify we're still on a track where other people have not trodden. Yep. And there's an asteroid belt. Anything else? Seven new objects, but are they all asteroids? No, there's some planet stuff here. Okay, well, it behooves me to explore some planets then. I'll skip the asteroids. They seem to be the ones that are closer in. This is probably the first actual planet. Okay, that is complete. And so we have another system explored by Fletcher Wilson. Well, not officially until I get back to a station and sell the information. But surface pressure, 3,852 atmospheres. That... That's an icy world? Okay. That is a serious place. Oh wait, 16,204 atmospheres. This is still a small planet. I have no idea how it manages to sustain such a surface pressure. I, I don't know. Didn't realize that sort of thing was possible. Ah, 0 0.77 atmospheres. That's, that's more comfortable. Unfortunately, helium. Okay, let's just give this one a quick ping. I'm not feeling like I'm covering enough ground. Space. 14. Okay, well, let's just peek at the system map. Oh, this is... Oh, good. It's been discovered already. By the squatter. Okay. Yeah. Good name. Le Squatter. Um, eh, our fuel is okay. This is our destination system. Maybe Le Squatter has already gotten to it. Okay, yes, nice bright star. Exactly the sort that I would try to target. Let's see if anybody's gotten here before us. Andragon. Well, we've seen Andragon before. Or Andragon. I don't know. Okay, so this has been done. Probably do fuel scooping here, but... Uh, okay. But let's target the next system. I don't know, the next system seems like it'll be pretty close to this one, and probably means that other people have already discovered stuff around it. Let's see. Come on. Oh, it's doing that thing again. I thought that was a uh, bug that had been fixed or something. Yeah, it's not letting me enter anything in this field. 
Uh, well, tentatively speaking, that's all right. I can just look ahead, zoom out a bit, and see what targets we've got. Since we're not trying, if we were trying to head back to Kakandi, for instance, that would be a real pain. But what I was looking for was OIJ D958. But I don't, I don't think that should be too far away. But uh, this, that's it. All right. Well, let's plot route for that. Don't know why we can't type it in, but hey. Radio. Off we go. Let's see, anybody done this one yet? Yeah, okay, we're on the same track as the Sand Dragon or Andragon. Okay. Well, that's a little bit of a disappointment. I was hoping to be a little bit clearer of everybody else. Let's let's just head for this next star, probably already discovered by this particular fellow commander. And then we'll see maybe after that we'll diverge. Tough to say. Of course, if we're all sort of going the same vague direction, that probably doesn't help. Yeah, okay, well, no surprise there. Um, so we're pretty much at 900 light years. Let's say I want to cross the 1,000 1, light year mark. And I want to find something just on the other side of it. Oh, that's very blue right there. This is a little bit out of our way. But maybe that'll be a good thing. HD 167335. Sounds like something others will have taken up, but there's other likely stars nearby to it that we could divert to. Okay, uh, so that's quite a long ways away. But we can fuel up completely here before moving out. So I'm probably just throwing out my list of stars to aim for now. Okay, uh, well okay let's let's do the normal thing first. Uh, I'm ex especially anxious to find out whether this has been... oh Krylaws. Well, at least it's not Andragon or a Andragon. Krylaws. I need to go a different track, clearly. Okay, well this one hasn't been explored. M-class, but hey, um, and an L-class dwarf there. Seems that there's something in between these two asteroid belts, otherwise there won't be space like that. Let's give a ping. Ooh, 20 things. Okay, well this could take a while. Alright, well I'll come back to you once I've uh, completed exploration of uh, all except for the asteroid belts. I'll skip those. But the rest I'll take on and I'll try and find this star. I'll come back to you with the results. That's interesting. I just got a slow down warning. I don't know why. There's nothing obvious around here. That's strange. Hold on. Let me go straight back and see what went on with that slowdown. Look. Yeah, let's slow down. Hold on. Okay, well there's something here. What what what's here? 
random slowdown warning out of nowhere while trying to get to what I thought was the the star the other star in the system well no I've already done that what am I doing icy planet So what we're talking about here is so I've, I've explored all this and way out here we've got an icy planet that I just happened to hit upon. There's probably other stuff in the middle here that I'm missing because I don't have an advanced scanner. Yeah, that's that's mighty interesting. So we just happened upon that on our way to this star. Okay, well anyway I'm gonna continue on my way I suppose. If I can find that targeted star again. Okay, here we go, the companion star in the system and we are approaching. It's been a long trip, 203,000 light years and counting. Yeah, what a system. And this fellow in the center here is a dim, dim star. Okay, so after this I'm gonna sprint to the target which will allow us to cross the 1000 light year mark. I get the feeling that next episode I'm just going to try and speed towards the center. We'll do another speed test, except instead of speeding back to Kakandi, we'll be speeding towards the center of the galaxy and we'll see how fast we can get like that uh, in uh, a lot of time, however much time I have. And the reason I'm doing that is because we're too close to other explorers right now. The other explorers have been through this space and I want to put some distance between me and the rest of the pack so so that'll be the plan for the next episode after I finish this up and cross the 1000 light year line and it is especially critical because when you think about it if these uh, just because this system for instance hasn't been officially explored yet discovered there's no credit to it that doesn't mean somebody else hasn't already been here uh, somebody else probably has already been here just hasn't gotten back to sell the information okay so uh, that should do it for this system oh uh, didn't even notice that there's a class 3 gas giant oh is that well I mean it hardly matters it's only an L-class star in the, in the beginning and this is actually uh, a binary system rather than a moon and a and a planet okay but otherwise it's not not like there's anything livable there so we shall move on okay let me give this a quick ping but I really want to get to the target to see frankly whether anybody else has discovered it yet so this is just a lone M-class star. It looks a little bit brighter than M-class but I guess it's a bright M-class star and then we'll be moving on to the next interim system This looks like a not so special place. At least it's unexplored, but I'm not gonna hang around. Of course, those T type 4s could have plenty of planets around, but I really want to head to my target. So let's get on with it. The question is. What are that HD star, which is a nice bright star, whether it's been discovered before or not. If not, then I'm in the, on a good track. If it has, then I've got a long ways to go before I can clear popular territory. Okay, G-type, white, yellow. Three new objects, so has this been discovered before? Yes, it has. Becca Valentine, congratulations. <laughs> all right, so, um, all right. 
Yeah, that's disappointing. Okay, well this is more proper. Blue white. B type, hopefully. Remember, I still get the credits even if I don't get the credit for discovery. So I would like a high class star, if you will. But Becca Valentine? No, actually, Becca Valentine was not the first to discover this one. Durkid. Durkid was the first to discover this one. It is a B type star. Uh, just out of curiosity, I'll give it a little ping out. Nothing nearby. Let me start fuel scooping, but I'll park it here. And our situation is this. We are at the 1000 light year mark. Just past it. And we are going to proceed as quickly as possible into the center of the galaxy in the next episode. Um, I don't know if it's any... It's worth anything to write anything down right now, because... Right now, I again have that issue where I can't type in this thing for some reason. So, okay. We'll do it the hard way. But, I want to cover about a thousand light years in the next episode at least. We'll see. Alright, so uh, with that, we've done some interesting exploring, but we have a lot of competition. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.